Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, on this day we remember Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Uh, we pray that you would magnify him in our hearts and that we would uh, learn to honor and love and exalt him as the King of Kings. We pray this in his holy name. Amen. What was the most tragic moment in history? Uh, If you're a Collingwood supporter, well, you've got a few to pick from. But maybe it was last year's grand final. Uh, Strong start, even scores at three-quarter time, uh, but tragically beaten by just five points at the end. Uh, In literature... Maybe it's the end of Romeo and Juliet, our two star-crossed lovers who miss by just a moment their chance of finally being together and instead they, they tragically die in each other's arms. Or more seriously, uh, maybe it's something like you know, the development of atomic energy, this, this amazing, uh, powerful new method of generating power with so much potential you know, tragically turned into the most terrible, destructive weapon of war the world's ever seen. Today, I want to suggest that one of, if not the most tragic moment in history, was Palm Sunday, when Jesus, God's King of Kings, entered into his capital city, Jerusalem. Uh, Jesus came to restore peace between God and between human beings. And for some, his arrival was a moment of anticipation and celebration. And we have all the, you know, the palm, palm leaves on the ground and the, the triumphal entry and all that. But for most, they did not recognize Jesus as God's king. And they utterly rejected him. So that just a few days later, Jesus was murdered on a cross outside of Jerusalem by the very people he came to bring peace with God for. And when we read the account of Palm Sunday in the Bible, the the question that hangs in the air is what will happen to those who reject God's king? Uh, Over the last few weeks at Berwick Anglican Church, we've been reading through Luke's Gospel together, uh, and we've been looking at encounters with Jesus in chapter 7 and chapter 8. And in these encounters, we've seen that that Jesus is the one who holds the authority of God. Uh, We've seen him uh, raise a dead widow's son back to life. We've seen him even forgive people's sins. Uh, We've seen that he's the one who has the power over even the, the wind and the waves, Uh, We've seen that he's even had the power to command demons and they they cringe before him and obey. Throughout the whole ministry of Jesus, God has been revealing to to everyone in Israel who Jesus is. He is God's chosen king, the one that they call the Christ. Uh, Now, uh, we've skipped ahead a few chapters to the end of Luke's book, to the Easter chapters, where God's king, Jesus, is about to enter the capital city of God's people and come to the place where God is on earth, the temple in Jerusalem. And the question is, will the people of the city recognize him? God has been acting to make sure all can know who Jesus is. And even now, as he prepares to enter the city, God is again revealing who Jesus is to those who are watching. And and this happens in two ways on Palm Sunday. Uh, First of all, who Jesus is, is demonstrated by his control of everything that's happening around him. Uh, We read that as Jesus approached Bethage and Bethany, at the hill called the Mount of Olives, He sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you why you untie it, tell them, 
the Lord needs it. And those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he told them. Jesus' knowledge and, and his confidence about the donkey's location and its availability and the owner's reaction, they all demonstrate who he is. Uh, throughout his whole ministry, and, and, and even now, Jesus hasn't just been making it up as he goes along. He, he holds the authority of God over all things, and everything is unfolding according to his plan. And indeed, the plan is an ancient one. Because the second way that that Palm Sunday reveals again who Jesus is, is through his fulfillment of ancient prophecies about the Christ. Uh, Luke writes that they brought uh, the donkey to Jesus, and they threw their cloaks on the colt, and they put Jesus on it. And then he went along, and people uh, spread their cloaks on the road. And this scene of Jesus riding on a donkey into Jerusalem is fulfilling a very specific prophecy from the prophecy of Isaiah, written hundreds of years earlier. Uh, When when Isaiah prophesied, he, he said to the people of Israel, looking forward hundreds of years, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The the prophets foretold a future king who will restore Jerusalem. And now, here is Jesus, uh, riding down towards the city, down the Mount of Olives, riding on a donkey, just as was foretold hundreds of years earlier. It's it's as if Jesus is wearing a, a massive sign on him saying, I am God's king. And so once again, just before the Easter week begins, God is revealing for all who want to see who Jesus is. And God continues to reveal his king today to all who truly seek Jesus. Uh, All these things that we've been studying, they've, they've been recorded in the Bible for a reason. If you want to know God, then you have the same tools at your disposal that the disciples had 2,000 years ago. Because the witness to Jesus and all these things that happened and his ministry was recorded for us in the scriptures. Uh, God wants everyone to know that Jesus is his king. Uh, Whether you don't know him yet or if you need to know him better. uh, Both ways, you can find out who Jesus is by reading the gospel accounts in the scriptures. If you do that and you you ask God to reveal himself to you, he will answer you and he will show you who Jesus is, his king. So God's king has finally arrived at his capital city, Jerusalem. He's entering in. How will the people react? Well, on Palm Sunday, we see two very different reactions. Firstly, for the disciples who have been traveling with Jesus and entering into Jerusalem with him, uh, Luke writes, verse 37, when Jesus came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives and the whole crowd of disciples began uh, to joyfully praise God in loud voices uh, for all the miracles that they had seen, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. These disciples have been paying attention. Jesus' ministry uh, up to this point has been one continuous demonstration of God's power. You know, the deaf speak, the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the gospel has been preached. And, And now with great joy in their hearts, they confess Jesus as God's king. And as they're walking with Jesus on the donkey down towards Jerusalem, They're singing a psalm. They're singing Psalm 118. Uh, Years, hundreds of years earlier, in in the old kingdom of of Israel, uh, before the Roman Empire, this psalm would have been sung as as a welcome at the temple, either for the king or for for pilgrims as they approached approached the temple 
are usually after a great victory. And now these pilgrims with Jesus are singing about him, but they've actually changed the words of the psalm. Uh, the, the, the high point of Psalm 118 says, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. But as Jesus approaches Jerusalem, these disciples are singing, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. For these disciples, the coming of Jesus to his capital is, is a moment of great joy. And they respond by praising God. And, the, and they sing, Peace in heaven and glory in in the highest. And for us Christians, it's the same today. Uh, you know, when you see a glimpse you know, of Jesus and his kingdom coming and advancing, you know, we're filled with joy. Uh, you, know, you think of the, you know, the joy when you see an adult being baptized for the first time or someone putting their faith in Jesus or, or growing in their discipleship or you know, when, when injustice in our society moves back or Uh, the church grows or Jesus is publicly exalted in our community. It's marvelous. It's wonderful. And and this joy that Jesus and his kingdom brings is offered to all who trust in him as God's king. But of course, as we know, uh, not everybody recognizes Jesus as king. And not everybody shares in this joyful response to him. Uh, This is the case today, and it was the case also on Palm Sunday as Jesus rode into Jerusalem. Among the joyful crowds of disciples, there were also some Pharisees, you know, Israel's religious elite and religious teachers. Now, the Pharisees, if nothing else, they knew their Bibles really well. They probably knew them better than me. They probably knew them better than you. Uh, Many of them had memorized all the commands in the Old Testament, and there's a lot of them. And because they know their Bible so well, they know exactly what Jesus and his disciples are claiming on Palm Sunday. You know, when they see him riding down into town on a donkey and, and singing Psalm 118. They know exactly what's being claimed, and they were offended by it and its implications. And and they respond to Jesus with anger and offense. That that anyone would suggest that this Jesus is God's chosen instrument to both save and rule the world. Uh, So Luke tells us in, in verse 39, he says, Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Or in other words, shut them up. But Jesus looks at them and responds and and says that the recognition of him as king and his kingship is inevitable. I tell you, Jesus replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Even if people refuse to recognize him, then the creation itself, the, the very stones, would testify to Jesus because he is who he is. He is God's chosen king come finally to the city of Jerusalem. What a tragedy that on such a wonderful day that brings such good news that these leaders of God's people, that their spiritual teachers miss the joy of the coming of Christ's kingdom. And it's a tragedy that's played out every day when people take offense at Jesus and his kingship. I don't know about you, but but I find that uh, most people in our city of Melbourne, they're more or less happy with Jesus at the level of an interesting historical figure. But as soon as Jesus starts to be recognized as God's living and reigning king. This can cause offense, and it can cause conflict, and it can cause anger. Because if Jesus is God's king, then following Jesus is the only way 
to be right before God. And many who are blinded uh, to the real state of the world and to their sin find that offensive. Don't be surprised when the world takes offense at the good news of Jesus Christ. Or or if the world takes offense at you, his joyful followers. It's a tragedy when this happens, but it's not unexpected. It happened to Jesus himself, it happened on Palm Sunday, and it will happen to us. And it's such a tragedy because Jesus and his kingship offer us what we most deeply need. This world is alienated from God, alienated from his goodness. But Jesus came to bring us peace with God, reconciliation with God. The recognition of Jesus and his kingship would have brought the city of Jerusalem peace. And as Jesus said of Jerusalem while approaching the city, if you, even you, had known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it's hidden from your eyes. And he continues, the days will come upon you when your enemies will build up an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another. Because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. With the benefit of hindsight and the distance of history, uh, we know exactly what Jesus is alluding to here. Uh, A few uh, few decades after Easter in 70 AD, uh, the city of Jerusalem rebelled against the Roman Empire. They sent a legion to besiege the city. The siege went on for almost two years. And when they finally broke in, uh, the Romans came and killed everyone in the city and tore it to pieces. And the reason for this tragic destruction was that the city missed the opportunity to recognize the coming of its king. And the city's destruction was God's judgment on those who rejected Jesus and his offer of peace. And there's a deeper warning here for us as well. God will soon judge the whole world and every human being, you and me and everyone else. And his judgment will hinge on how you respond to God's king. Recognizing Jesus as God's king brings you peace with God. And this gift is freely offered to everyone. But those who reject Jesus and reject peace with God will face terrible judgment. As one Bible scholar, Daryl Bock, has put it, it is a fearful thing to be responsible before God for the rejection of Jesus. Luke tells us in verse 41, as Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. What a strange sight that procession down the Mount of Olives must have been on that day. It was as the crowds of disciples rejoiced and they, they had their palm leaves and the, the cloaks on the road singing the songs. But Jesus, in the middle of them, weeping on a donkey. Jesus came in love to save the lost. But he foresaw that many would not recognize him as king. And he foresaw the terrible consequences of this. And it filled him with grief. And so he weeps. Jesus weeps because he knows Jerusalem will soon seal its fate and finally reject him and his offer of peace as they murder him on a cross. But Jesus is not indifferent 
to those who don't recognize him. He's not indifferent to those who hate him. Jesus loves them. And he wants them to have the peace with God that only he brings. And this is true of every human being. Jesus loves you. If you are not yet his follower, even if you've been sitting in church for years, but you've not yet fallen down and worshipped him as king and lord over every part of your life, Jesus weeps for you. And he calls you to recognize him as king and to come home and come into his eternal peace. On Palm Sunday 2,000 years ago, there were mixed responses to Jesus as he entered into Jerusalem and inaugurated his kingdom. And there will also be mixed responses to Jesus when he soon returns in his glory to fulfill his kingdom and to judge the earth. Those who reject God's king, they miss now the joy that Jesus brings us here on earth. And in the future judgment, they will miss the peace with God that is only found in God's king. Failing to recognize God's king is the greatest tragedy that could ever befall you. Don't let it happen to you. Don't let it happen to those we live amongst, our friends and family and our colleagues in the city of Casey. As we prepare to celebrate Easter next week, as Berwick Anglican Church, let us recommit ourselves to together magnify the good news of Jesus, that he loves the lost and he offers peace with God to all who recognize him as king. Amen.